Now let's talk about the native tribes that lived in this area for thousands of years. California was one of the most heavily populated areas of North America before the Europeans arrived in the 16th century. Now why live in this region? What does it have to offer? Or precisely because of the environment, the coastal range that provided seafood, the acorns from the oak trees, the small game that thrived in this area. And all of that could, could support a fairly large population with fishing and hunting and gathering and limited agriculture. And that's a big difference with some of the tribes to the East Coast and to the Northwest. There's very limited agriculture in this area. But the environment supported so many other sources for food. And if you think of that climate, relatively less harsh than in many other parts of the state, you have the perfect environment to support a population. There is a difficulty in researching tribes in this area, however, and that's because there remains no known written language of the tribes who lived here. And that's quite a difference compared to the Aztec uh, and the Inca, uh, the tribes of Mexico, Central America, of South America, uh, who had a pictographic script told of their history, of uh, their calendar, of astrology, and so on. So we know a lot about these tribes that we really don't know about the local tribes to Southern California. So we have to turn to other disciplines. We turn to archaeology uh, to look at the, some of the physical artifacts. Um, we look to anthropology to try to learn something about the kinship groups of these areas. And to what extent we can, we turn to oral history and listen to some of the lore and traditions uh, that have been passed down, some of which still exist to the present day. Several tribes lived in the area that became Los Angeles County. These were the Chumash, the Gabrielino, the Fernandino, the Serrano, and the Cuya. Some of these have taken their uh, modern names from missions, which we can talk about later. Uh, these were not necessarily the names they gave themselves, but the names that have been passed down uh, from history. We know most of these groups of the Chumash, whom I'll address in just a bit. We know that there were Indian tribes living in the west of North America for tens of thousands of years. There is evidence of the Chumash having lived along the coastal region uh, at least 4,000 years ago, and evidence around 1500 BCE of social organizations, clans developing, and the families with a hierarchy of power. So for the Chumash, what we know is that they left far more of a trace than many other tribes in this area. And one of the reasons for that was from the name itself, the Chumash, which comes from uh, the Chumash word Michumash, which means shell bead money, because the Chumash had a wide network of trade throughout Southern California, and they left behind these beads, these sh shell forms of money that uh, show how important this tribe was to this region. They stretched as far up as north uh, to the north as uh, Santa Barbara uh, and San Luis Obispo, and uh, it stretched down to what is today uh, Malibu, because some of these names are Chumash names. Malibu, Ojai, Pismo, uh, and uh, all the way down through 
uh, from uh, Ventura down to the part uh, of uh, northwest Los Angeles County. And they divided into three classes, the upper, the middle, and the lower class, with the wealthy, the shamans, the powerful and the upper class, and those who were less skilled who were placed in the lower class. For survival, they collected acorns, as most tribes did in this area. The acorn is the basic uh, uh, food source that can be uh, broken up and created into a kind of mush. They collected shellfish, hunted fish and sea lions. They hunted small game, deer, rabbits, antelope, which are now extinct. They had no domesticated animals that we know of and no agriculture. But they did have weapons, the bow and arrow, the slings, poison-tipped arrows, and curved hooks for fishing, and that ever-present trade with the shell bead money. Canoes were at the foundation for Chumash society. These were very large canoes, some times between 12 and 30 feet in length, made of redwood or pine, caulked with that tar from the oil in the environment, and often decorated with, she with uh, seashells and drawings. And canoe owners were considered amongst the elite in Chumash society because of the environmental importance that uh, trade had up and down the coast. For clothing, women wore short skirts of animal skin decorated with shell beads and colorful feathers and perhaps buckskin pieces around the waist with a string and braided shell in their hair. The men tended to walk around naked or in winter might have a cape, a fur cape, a fox or otter, squirrel or rabbit. And they lived in dome-shaped huts, uh, wikiups, uh, made of reed and straw, which anywhere from 12 to 20 feet in diameter. We know something about the religion of the Chumash, and their oral history helps to play a role. That they saw the universe as consisting of three worlds, the upper world, where the gods lived, the first people, as they called them, the middle world where people lived on earth, and the lower world where evil spirits lived, which they called the Nunishish. And while these were separate levels, they also interacted with each other. And the evil spirits could come up at night, and the gods of the moon and the sun could interact with humans. And they used this religion to explain floods, to explain earthquakes, and to explain evil, how bad things happen on earth. With the power of the shamans being central. And sweat houses were important as they were in all desert tribes of the southwest. Uh, sweat houses were partially underground, were solely the province for the male members of the tribe, the, where they used um, uh, aromatic herbs put on um, a fire and then used to, to cleanse the body, but also to cleanse the spirit. Uh, and on rare occasions, women and children could have access to the sweat houses, but it formed a kind of bonding for the community. We know they love sports, they love to kick ball, and they love gambling. But most of all, uh, they existed through trade. And one of the main tribes that the Chumash traded with were the Gabrielino. That is not the name that they gave themselves. 
to the best of our knowledge, they call themselves the Tongva, although the scholars consider other names, such as Kish for house. And they existed in the southern and eastern parts of Los Angeles County, down to northern Orange County, so from Topanga Canyon down to Laguna Beach. And also in the islands, Catalina and San Clemente. There are at least 31 known Tongva sites, each with somewhere between uh, 400 to 500 huts, including a village in what is today uh, downtown Los Angeles. And they called themselves the people of the earth. And they arrived here somewhat later than the Chumash, perhaps around 500 BCE, and were very similar to the Chumash in terms of their social structure, with an upper class, middle class, and a lower class, with a religion, with a shaman-based culture, uh, with some, some minor differences, like uh, the Gabrielino believed that their earth stood on uh, seven turtles, and when the turtles moved, that created earthquakes. And one thing that was very different, which is at the heart of any culture, was the language. The language of the Gabrielino was um, descended from Uto Aztecan uh, language, as was true of almost all inland valley uh, tribes. And so they're related to the Hopi of Arizona and related linguistically to the Aztecs of uh, Mexico. The Gabrielino spoke at least three different dialects and names like Tahunga and Cucamonga and Topanga. These are all Gabrielino names. They traded with the Chumash, occasionally fought and, and, uh, and warred with the Chumash, but they were, uh, to the best of our knowledge, intimately associated for survival through trade, the collection of acorns, and unlike the Chumash, limited agriculture, the burning of grass and the dropping of tobacco seeds uh, in the ashes. They used poison-tipped arrows, and game was plentiful. Birds, lizards, snakes, as well as deer and rabbit. And living off of Catalina Island, they mined a mineral called steatite, which they sold to other tribes, including the Chumash, which they used for ceremonial purposes, creating ceremonial objects, as well as bowls for, uh, for food. Like the Chumash, they lived in round huts held up by uh, poles and reed mats. Those who lived on uh, Catalina uh, Island used uh, whalebone, uh, and they ate and smoked tobacco, and they believed in evil, evil spirits like the Chumash, and as a shamanistic culture, um, had a central importance of the sweat house and a way through the religion to work through um, dealing not only with evil spirits, but also dealing with illness and, um, and poor health. Which means that when Europeans arrived, the Gabrielino and the Chumash had very little defense to try to protect themselves from the terrible diseases that the Europeans brought.